Welcome back to Cyber Underground. I know you missed me. I'm back. You're welcome. I'm Dave Stevens. I teach at the University of Hawaii, Kapi'olani Community College. I teach ethical hacking and network security. That's my intro to the show, the cybersecurity show that uh, we're having guests with today on today. Welcome, guys. Brandon Lester, Victor Wolf. I need you guys to tell us about yourselves, and then let's go into National uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month again. All right. <laughs> Victor. So I'm Victor Wolf. Okay. Uh, I'm, by day, I'm a uh, chief warrant officer in the U.S. Army. However, I disclaimer, I'm not here to speak on you behalf of the U.S. Army. You do not represent the U.S. Army today. It's very okay. clear yeah. with the uh, staff judge advocate to make that disclaimer. Got so, it. Uh, uh, not here to speak on that. I am also, you know, a uh, volunteer. And so with the uh, local ISC Squared chapter. So ISC Squared is the overarching organization which certifies uh, CISSPs, the Certified Information Systems Security Professionals. So today we're going to discuss about how the uh, ISC squared professionals on island, CISSPs, uh, cyber professionals, can uh, go to different venues and give a presentation to individuals on how to be safer online. So, and what does that get them? That, okay, so that will the incentive to the cyber pros is to uh, get five CPEs for each one of these. So as a CISSP, I have to maintain my certification. I have to. Right. Do 40 CPEs each year and pay my $125 to ISC okay, Squared. Let's talk to the cheap seats really quick. Right. The CPEs are? Our continuing professional education credits. And you need to get a certain number of hours right. per year. 40 per year. To keep your certification, or otherwise the certification gets yanked and you got to go take that horrible test yes. all over again. And none of us want to go sit for that <laughs> six hour exam again. So that's Six hours and what, 700 bucks? I mean, what yeah, do we pay for that? Is. And that's, that's stressful. Uh, I think I used half a paycheck on that oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. way back when. And I kept thinking, what if I fail? <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of a time lot of and money. A lot people fail their first time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of stress on you. OK, so um, we can earn five CPEs by giving a talk to the mm -hmm. public about how to stay safe online, at home, with your devices. Hopefully, a lot of mobile security now. Yep. Since we social media that. has invaded our mobile devices, mm -hmm. and we are never without them ever it's become an electronic leash mm -hmm. and we can't throw it away i tried to spend a day without my phone it would not work i had too many people coming to say hey i just sent you an email i just tried to text you i just tried to call you <sighs> okay now i gotta take my phone everywhere i go you guys turn it off at night i hope <laughs> do I not don't. disturb yeah absolutely. yeah yeah do, do not disturb, not disturb. Yeah. yes i do i do i'm religious about it's the starting do not to get to our thing. mental health now right. yeah, 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 yeah absolutely so, but uh a lot of channels into uh, the social engineering aspect of getting into somebody's life mm -hmm. comes through your mobile device now. Yeah, so especially I, leaving your geolocation services on all the time. It's convenient to just open that Google Maps. Oh, I love Maps, those things. Yeah. But, you know, Where am I right now? Where am I going? What about Where's what my is, car? Yeah. It knows. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It tells you parked car at certain locations. That's right. It'll take you two that. minutes to walk to your car. It's like, how do you know where my car is? Right. Oh, you a see a lot scary. of changes in the newer versions of software. They're, they're being a lot more conscientious with how they treat uh, accessing that data. I know in, the, in some of the new iOS stuff, they're asking, do you want access to Bluetooth for this app? Do you want access to location for this app? How often, once, today, while it's open, forever and ever? And they're, they're doing a lot better job, I think, trying to make us aware of that. Thank goodness, because when this first came out, we all thought, look at this magical internet. Look at this wonderful mobile device. Look at this great iPhone and Android mm -hmm. phone. Look at all these wonderful things that can do. And hardly any of us thought, What's going on in the background? Who's getting all this stuff? Now, I got a, I get a little plug here. I watched a thing called The Great Hack on Netflix. Have you guys seen this? I yeah. have. Yeah. Cambridge wow. Analytica and everything Man. to do with that. Good show. Yeah. Uh, folks, go out and watch The Great Hack. It was awesome. It's on Netflix, and I'm sure you can get it in other places, but I'm not going to tell you how to do that because this is an ethical uh, cybersecurity show. So anyway. Yeah, great. Um, but it, it really uh, identified for me some of the little missing pieces because I knew this data was out there. I thought, you know, what's the trick? How are they using this stuff? It's really important for people to know everything you do, you're tagged. Yeah, absolutely. Some kind of grid, yep. right? So be careful what you put out there. I had to tell my sister, please don't tag us when we're in Vegas. You know, here, I'm here yeah. with my brother. Click, you know. And absolutely. Like, great. Now everyone knows I'm not home. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. If there's a dollar to be made on your data, someone's going to try and do it. Sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. And I, I guess people don't realize all these free services are free because the other revenue stream supports you, right. your usage, right? That right. They're selling you, basically, who you are, your essence. 
to other people. And uh, now, in my opinion, that really swung an election. Absolutely. Or it was a great part of it, at least. I can't right. make a positive statement, but I'm saying after that show, it reinforced my belief that we really got swayed that way. So I'm so glad that individuals like you are giving talks out there in the public and the islands. And we were just talking about how few of us there are in the islands that actually work in this industry as professionals. But secretly, many of us work in the IT profession and do a lot of cyber as well. So we're also cybersecurity professionals, thank goodness. Uh, what do we need to know about National Cyber uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month? So for two audiences, one for the cybersecurity professionals on island, we want you to go to our website, uh, ISC Squared. The quickest way to is just Google ISC Squared Hawaii. Go on there, we have a, a Google web form that you can fill out. There's a link there that you can say, hey, these different places, we're going to be at libraries, we're going to be at shopping centers all month. What's convenient for you and uh, you know, what works best for your schedule? And then we already have the canned presentations. It's not like you have to go invent the wheel or anything. We're already going to have, after you fill out the form, it's going to let you download this uh, uh, presentation. You'll go ahead and study that. You'll get uh, credits oh. for, that's what we're really giving you credits for, that's is the great. five hours you know, of, of study and then presentation. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we give you that. You can do it up to two times. So you can get essentially 10 credits out of this. And then after that, it's going to be one per. But yeah, it's a quick way to earn 10 CPEs for those of you on island who, who want to go out and just give an already pre-canned pitch. And it's really actually very well put together. So I think we've, we've done a good job between our organizations to put, put forth a good product so you can download it, take a look at it, and it's probably stuff you're already familiar with. Go ahead and pitch it. And so that's for the Cybersecurity Pro, and they can earn those CPEs, which I know all of us need. The second pitch is for your average citizen here who just wants to learn how to be safer online. So again, you can go to some of these uh, events, whether it's at a, a library or whether it's a shopping mall. We also are, are gearing one of the presentations that you can choose to go to is for the Kapuna. So we have some of the uh, care facilities on island. Some are open, some are not. Some are, we've already reserved that we have other cyber pros that are going to go there and be at those. But uh, all the open ones are going to be on the website. Um, if you could bring up the, the website, I want to make sure everyone sees. Um, so we're so looking for be the, uh, yeah, the uh, ohs.hawaii.gov uh, forward slash cyber. Uh, so you want to put this image yeah, up on the screen yeah, for us? Absolutely, if you would. The so we got to put Office the, of Homeland Security which one is for it? the state of Hawaii. Okay, yeah. so if you'll see on the left hand side, you have all the places on Oahu. Our neighbor islands, uh, we're going to have some places there, Hilo, out at Kailua Kona, et cetera. Uh, but we'll be out at some of the different uh, shopping malls, uh, different workshops for Kapuna. It's all listed on this graphic right here. Uh, so take your family out. If you want to see how to just you know, secure your elderly mother's cell phone better, I think all of us could do that, right? So uh, go, go to one of these events. See how you may have some of your own settings within your uh, Android device or your uh, Apple device, and you have it set great, and you've been using it securely for years, but maybe someone who just got it out of the box when they went to Verizon or wherever, and it's just still sitting there default. So there's, we're, gonna, we're not just going to talk and give a, a great slideshow. We're going to actually show people there's going to be a QA. and a So every, even cyber pros <clears throat> are going to learn something from this. Mm -hmm. Every time I go to any one of these kind of events, I, I went to a Boy Scout event. And you know there was someone else pitching uh, his thing. I learned a lot just from his his thing, and I'm, I'm sure he did from from mine as well. So I think it, it's going to be mutually beneficial. And uh, at the end of the day, we'll all be smarter on how to be more secure online because there's a lot of criminals that are out there trying to get your data, uh, you know, off of data breaches. Many data breaches, the Target and all those. There's all these hashes of their passwords already out there. They can download on the dark web. So it's just, if you haven't changed your, the biggest thing I would say is just change your password. Like right now, <laughs> National Cybersecurity Month, everybody change your password, go, go especially on your phrase, bank. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go to a passphrase. Mary had a little lamb. Yep. Say lamb in Spanish. You know, <laughs> put a cue ball graphic or something in there, you know, something weird. You know, we didn't get to you, Brandon. I'm here. Tell us about yourself. So, uh, Brandon Lester representing uh, AFSIA Hawaii today. So much like Victor, I have the, the day job with SRC Technologies as a cybersecurity professional. And then uh, in my volunteer time, I represent um, the young AFSEANs, which is a facet within AFSEA Hawaii. Oh, here. what is AFSEA? So AFSEA is an organization that's really focused on bringing communities together, whether that's government and industry and academia, but it's meant to kind of 
help us bolster uh, defense at the government levels, whether it's federal, state, or local? So I think, does it say for Armed Forces Communications Electronics Association? It did, once. Once. What is it now? Just As AFCIA. of this year, there's a rebranding going more towards just the, the brand name of AFCIA that's been recognized for so long as oh. an international organization. So uh, the, the acronym is gone, but everyone does still remember the acronym, and it's good to know our roots, right? Going back to um, the foundation over 60 years ago and having that organization be a, a leader in trying to bring the community together in at least the um, technology space and now a lot more in the cyberspace. Yeah, I think another organization, as is, did the same thing. They're just known as ASIS now. Mm -hmm. But they used to be, way back when, the American Society of Industrial Security. And that's, that's not even on the website anymore. Right. You can't go back and look at that history. I had to really dig for that because yeah. I thought, who are these people? <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a name, but at some point, uh, you have to remember where it came from, but yeah. also, you know, looking forward, maybe as is, is the, is the future uh, branding that they're looking for. You know, I think why they did that, and I think you guys can, and can go with me on this, uh, you know, I'm a little older, so I, rem I remember how the IT department and the physical security in any company were completely separate silos, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. You had facilities handling phys physical security, security guards, cameras, and gates, and all that stuff, and then IT guys handled the, the network, right? Now they have to come together, and I think that's why AS is rebranded. Sure. It's because the physical security guys are realizing that all these cameras and gates and prox cards and all the other things are hooked up to an IT system. <laughs> which just happens to be run by the IT crew. So you should put the whole cyber package together, and mm -hmm. especially when you talk about NIST and ISO and all those other uh, quals that we got out there, those, those standards, they have physical security in their, in their control set, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it, it makes sense. So I guess FC is going down the same road. It's, it's good that I like you guys have young SEA. And you guys do awards for uh, youth, right? We do. Almost every month. Yeah, guys, absolutely. We yeah. have student awards. We have young FC awards. We try to focus on recognizing folks out there in the community that are doing good things. And uh, last time I went, they were at Fort Shafter. We are at Fort Shafter most of the time. Um, this month, actually, we're hosting a special event here at the uh, Hawaiian Convention Center next Tuesday, October eighth. It's going to be focused on cybersecurity. So we're hosting a panel with a, a great. Uh, selection of guests. We've got folks from uh, Coast Guard, Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security, um, NSA, uh, the state of Hawaii's CISO, uh, a litany of good wow, folks. Wow, people way up the food chain mm -hmm. for me. That's awesome. And I, I don't think uh, to our audience out there, if you haven't ever been to the Hawaii Convention Center, it's an experience. It is Absolutely. a beautiful place. It's like a cathedral. I mean, it it's, is. it's glass with uh, beautiful plants and waterfalls and mm -hmm. it's just, just the escalators just the escalators <laughs> yeah. is an experience yeah. yeah so yeah actually i should go please okay. do all yeah right. join us <laughs> all right so next tuesday it's a breakfast so we've got um food starting at around seven and then we're going to kick the events off at, at eight and much like speaking um at some of these isc squared hosted um awareness events we're also offering some some ceus for this so you get two hours of cybersecurity professional style uh credits Great. Hey, we're going to get right back to this after we take a break and pay some bills, and we'll be coming right back with more slides and more information about the National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Until then, everybody, stay safe. Aloha, my name is Duray Shin. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I will be hosting a show here every other Wednesday at 1 p.m., and we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in, and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.
Welcome back to the Cyber Underground, the second half of the show. Uh, once again, I'm Dave Stevens. I teach uh, ethical hacking and network security for the University of Hawaii at Kapiolani Community College. I'm also the IT program director over there. I'd like to give a little plug for my show. We're trying to do this at least once a month. Now, the Defense Federal Acquisition Regulations, or DFARS, is extremely important and we'll be coming up with a new cybersecurity maturity model certification program as of the year 2020. And if you're a DOD vendor working with the DOD, you have to be NIST 800-171 compliant and certified by an outside organization that stamps you on level one through five. We're gonna give you more information and updates as the certification becomes live. It's still being worked on right now. And every month we'll do DFARS for dummies. We had our last episode Two weeks ago, please check it out on YouTube. We're back again with Victor Wolf, Brandon Lester, talking about National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. I said all that without stuttering. That's like my first time ever. <laughs> wow. Uh, what else can you tell us about National uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month? Uh, we talked about uh, your presentations at the libraries and um, at shopping centers, yep. at malls. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we put up the graphic a minute ago of where to go and where to get the information. Maybe we should put that up again really quick and it'll kick off our, our talk. Now, is there a website on here we can go to? There is not a website. Not on here. Not in here. Yeah, There's so you another go slide to the with the state website. website the the, which one? Office of Homeland Security website. So if you want to bring uh, I think the number two slide. <laughs> oh, number two slide. ohs.hawaii.gov slash cyber. ohs.hawaii.gov yep. forward slash cyber. Correct. And then uh, all that information you're talking about is there? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me more about what you guys are doing. So we'll be out at these different facilities. We want to recruit with this TV show, hopefully, uh, <laughs> some cybersecurity professionals to come uh, go online, sign up to be a presenter. And we want plenty of the people in the public to come be our audience that we can go ahead and earn our CPEs for. And we also want to make sure that everyone on the islands uh, is more secure online. So I know there was a recent statistic saying that uh, you know our Kapuna are tar targeted more than the rest of the elderly population throughout the states, the other uh, continental United States. So uh, really, uh, for whatever reason, hmm. uh, a lot of the cyber crime is directed at our Kapuna. So we want to make sure that we're we're ha we have a separate program just for that because of that uh, vulnerable population. Enormously important when you think about this. some of these people live in uh, communities that is all. Kapuna, mm -hmm. and uh, they have computer access there. Mm -hmm. And the people running the centers sometimes aren't security professionals, they're more in the medical profession. Exactly. Right? So this is uh, enormously important. Uh, Absolutely. Good. And of course, we all give our Kapuna their smartphones, right? right. Because right. we want them to contact us. And uh, that's, that's pretty terrible when they get hacked that way right? through their mobile device. Absolutely. Uh, I love that you guys do it. What about our Keiki? So for our Keiki, uh, we'll have a, uh, so for this month, uh, particularly, we don't have a, a geared program towards our Keiki. Some of the times we'll have um, the Boy Scouts. There's also, uh, I'm sorry, at the November 1st, there is one for the Girl Scouts. Girl so Scouts of America has done a lot of cyber. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So they have a, a yeah. brilliant cyber event out there on Ford Island on the 1st. Of, of November. So we're going to be out there as a chapter. And uh, one good thing, if you're a cybersecurity professional, you're not in one of the two organizations, either AFSIA or ISC Square, we do a lot of events together, mm -hmm. co-sponsor a lot of events. So if you're plugged into one, you're plugged into the other. Uh, you know, earlier you talked about AFSIA and what it was and how they've changed their name. I, being in DOD, I've been an AFSIA member for years and just kind of always knew about them. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great that we can co-sponsor. So, you, you know, if you're one one organization, you kind of get the benefit of being the other. Uh, I wish I'd known about it when I was in the service, but I served in the 80s, and I was a cop. So <laughs> no one's going to tell a, a Marine Corps MP that there's AFSIA. Right. Hey, go look at this right. technical organization. They have guns? No? <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Uh, but it sounds like a great organization, and I've, I've had the opportunity to speak and attend those events mm. for AFSIA, and they're terrific. And keep doing them, please. Oh, I'm going to try you. to get to the convention center for the one you, you yeah, were speaking please. about earlier. And I just want to do a quick note. The, the Girl Scouts event is called STEM Fest. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Um, they are really looking to partner with as many folks in the community as possible. So it's always great, especially um, here. It, it tends to feel like one big cyber ohana in a sense. Everyone wants to help each other, right? We're not 
we're not trying to have one organization that says, well, we can do cyber, but I don't know about the other guys. It's everyone wants to build up the community for, for awareness sake and help each other as much as we can. Enormously important. I think you bring up a, a great, uh, uh, important topic. STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, has notoriously cut, just pushed out IT functions like cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. But now we're seeing that we're, especially in the IoT or Internet of Things, we're needing more cyber because we be, keep putting out webcams and refrigerators and you know, Internet-enabled toasters with no security right. or the worst security possible. Right. And, and they're eminently hackable. They're on your network, and you can use it as a pivot device to get to the real stuff. So if you can get on someone's Wi-Fi through their webcam, you can get to the computer and get their bank account eventually if you're good enough. Right. But that pivot point is enormously important, and I, I like that STEM people are bringing in cyber folks, and now we can work together again. It's, Absolutely. it's very nice. It, in fact, I think, they think it's, I think they forget that science, technology, engineering, math shares the T with information technology, so right. they're actually the same, Absolutely. same thing. Yeah, the technology piece, I think, has become so pervasive that if you don't know that you're um, related to cybersecurity in some way, you'll learn it in, in probably the bad way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, even if you, you know, if you run uh, Layla's Flower Shop, right, you might have a website, you might have some online payment methods, but that is all on the internet, and you are exposed just as well as that, that Internet of Things camera. Oh, and the, the most effective channel to anybody's business is through the point of sale system. That yes. POS is usually hooked up to the Windows 7 computer that everybody shares right. with the admin privileges. Right? Absolutely. So if you can hack the POS, you've got it in with the company. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, Target and Home Depot learned that the hard way. Mm -hmm. I hope all the small businesses will, will learn that. Uh, tell us more. So if they're uh, still running, the, the POS system is still running on an XP box. I mean, that, it's like this is the month to get rid of that POS box. Right. <laughs> right. Upgrade. Uh, spend a little bit of capital right up front from the business. And, There's and, so uh, many cloud services that businesses can take uh, advantage of right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. um, Office 365 and Azure has just run way out in front mm -hmm. with their GCC High offering for the mm -hmm. DoD. And the Office 365 is NIST 800-171 compliant on 50 different controls from the, from the outset. I think uh, if you took advantage of that, even um, remote hosting of your operating system through a dumb terminal, so it's all secured someplace else. And it's, yep. that's a service that like Hawaii Tech Support can offer for local vendors. Or sure. uh, Amazon Web Services has that, mm -hmm. right? Um, any recommendations for small businesses uh, to come up to speed? Actually, Hawaii Tech Support, uh, Tim Ames is our vice president. So Timothy <laughs> Ames of Hawaii Tech Support, shameless plug. frequent guest on this show. Shameless plug, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's, a, it's a great organization, and they, what I like about Hawaii Tech Support is they do what you guys do. They focus on the individuals. They don't just come to sell you a package. Mm -hmm. They find out what you do and how you do it, and then try to simplify it and secure it. And I think that's what you guys do, too. Tell me what you do. Here's how you can do it. Not exactly better, but at least a little bit more efficient and safe. Stay in the safe space. When you wander out of the edges, you're taking a risk, right? right. And, and that's what I preach to small businesses when I work with them is uh, your threat landscape can never be zero. Absolutely. But you can shrink it mm -hmm. down to only the zero day attacks will mm -hmm. get to you, right? Or only the insider threat. But that's got to be an effort, right? And Absolutely. If, if everybody's participating, we can all find the, the cheapest and easiest way to get there safely. And I'm, I'm so glad you guys are doing this during this. I wish every month was Cybersecurity <laughs> Awareness Month. Yeah, I've, just, seen, I've seen that trending on, uh, on LinkedIn and some other places. You know, yeah. we can't save this for one month. We have to do it all year. Well, <laughs> yeah. this is the month where we'll go a, a little bit above and beyond our normal uh, mantra to say, well, okay, you guys are always secure. preaching this, right? Yeah, this is Absolutely. this is our mantra. Yeah. yeah, we go through the streets and yeah. preach this and scream it from the mountaintops. Exactly. Yeah. What else are you guys going to do? So I think coming up, uh, we have quite a few different events uh, between the different websites. Whether you go to uh, Google ISC Squared Hawaii or whether you Google AFSIA Hawaii, that all gets you pointed back to some of these links. Much easier than saying, okay, this date, this uh, this particular location, but. In general, uh, we're really pumping up the, the efforts for October specifically, and that really kind of leads us to the, to the rest of the year and then all the other fun things happening through uh, our typical calendar years. Well, that's great. Uh, 
We got about two minutes left. You guys want to do any shameless plugs for your businesses or organizations? Because now's the time. I want to give a I want to give a cybersecurity tip, right? Okay. I mean, like you said before, uh, Vic mentioned, change your password now. Well, there is a national password change day somewhere out there. Yeah. Remember what it is. <laughs> I can't remember. What I like to tell folks is, um, make sure you don't use the same password on multiple websites. Oh, I yes. know that is. You know, <laughs> uh, my, my parents have the password book. Um, that's better because Eminently that's a phys secure. physical <laughs> control. That is right. it, right? Um, just make sure you don't do the same password on your Gmail, Zippos, and then uh, and every yeah. other susceptible shopping website you ever go oh, to, right? right? right, right. Um, and a lot of good ways to, to deal with that. Um, personally, most folks recommend password managers. There's mm -hmm. a, quite a few out there, and it lets you control the password. You don't even have to remember it because the whole idea is it's complex, it's long, and you're uh, copying and pasting it back right into where the website goes. Yeah, that's a great thing to have on your mobile phone, too. Uh, what I wouldn't recommend is what a lot of people have done, and they have a notepad yeah. or, or some kind of Excel spreadsheet. It's called Passwords, and yeah. sits on their desktop. <laughs> you know, or eminently more secure, <laughs> not passwords. <laughs> no, but passwords, right, right. Not not passwords. Secret, right, yeah, right. <laughs> secret file, do not open, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what people don't realize is once you get hacked, um, like if I'm the hacker and I get under your system, that's, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the passwords file. I'm looking for the stuff that can get me into other stuff. You're just my pivot point to your bank account or exactly. your personal information. Uh, is that a good tip? Yeah. Any tips from the IC squared? Uh, yeah, I would just say definitely don't save that on your desktop. <laughs> so that, that would be the main thing because a hacker is not looking for your pictures or anything you have. Like that's you know, just something else that they can sell online maybe. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they want that uh, one file that you keep all your passwords to all your accounts on, and then they're just gonna pivot from that. Um, there's one site out there I could recommend to everyone, it's called uh, Have, I, Have I Been Pwned? Oh, online. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, P it's P -A -W -N. P -W -N -E -D, yeah. 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 That, that's so, a great site, and it'll, it actually told me a couple of my email addresses from way back when, uh, the Sony hack, like I right. caught in that, right, because I had a PS3. Yeah. Uh, I had to, you know, luckily I change my password every month or every six weeks or every week or however right. when I think of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, great tips. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thanks for, having, Thanks for having, having us on the All show. Right. Appreciate yeah. it. Thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we'll be back in another couple of weeks. Uh, two weeks, 14 days from now. Come back and see another Cyber Underground. We'll be doing another DFARS for Dummies. And until then, stay safe.